morning. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. As you have, might know, the weather has once again thwarted our plans of being in this space together, so we are completely virtual this morning. We also, though, have a celebration in the life of our congregation. The rosebud on the organ this morning is in celebration of the, the birth of a- Oliver David, who was born to Zach and Allison. Zach is the son of Laura Cure. Our congratulations to their new life in their family. We just want to continue to thank you for the ways you support the ministry here at Tuckahoe Presbyterian Church and would remind you that your giving continues even when we cannot be physically together. So if you have any questions or issues uh, about how you're making your offerings to the church, please be in contact with us and we would be glad to help you. We also want to make sure that you're aware of pastoral care issues as they come up. Um, we want to ensure you that you will be emailed those uh, as emails to describe what kind of needs we have as a congregation, and also a uh, reminder of those in our Friday email as well. As you probably know, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday that marks the beginning of our Lenten journey together. We will have a fully virtual service, and you will get information on that uh, in your emails and on our church website this week. We also, um, you might have already received a mail uh, envelope in the mail. Um, We have sent home some Lent devotion materials for this season, uh, some ideas of different practices that you can engage in, including a digital Lenten calendar uh, that you will find the links to um, in that mailer, on our website, on Facebook. Uh, And each day you will be able to open a door of that calendar and see a different Lent spiritual practice to engage in. And this morning, when we start the season off, we start with communion again. Uh, If you have items in your home, make sure you get those, a bread item and a beverage as well, so that we can celebrate together. Let us prepare now to worship God. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. The glory of God shines like a consuming fire. We have seen the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The voice of God thunders like a mighty storm. Out Out of the the cloud, cloud, God God speaks. speaks. This This is is my my beloved beloved son. Son. Listen Listen to to him.
nothing can be hidden from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God's wisdom is endless. God's mercy is great. Trusting then in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. God of transformation, you make new life where there was old, dazzling light where there were shadows, peace where there was violence, and friends where there were enemies. Forgive us, O God, when we stand in the way of your transformative love. Forgive us when we do not live as people who have been changed by your grace. Call us to the mountain once more and send us out to be witnesses of your transformative grace. Hear these words of assurance of our forgiveness. Our God comes and does not keep silent. God speaks to us with grace and love, saying, You are my beloved child. This, friends, is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ be with you all. God of shining splendor, your voice makes the earth tremble and wonder. Overshadow us with your spirit so that we may hear your word and live as faithful disciples and covenant people through Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today is from 2 Kings, chapter 2. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way home from Gigal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were, with, who were at Jericho drew near Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah and Elisha said to Elisha, Tell me, what may I do for you? Before I am taken from you, Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. 
Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite my young disciple, who also happens to be our lay reader today, to join me over here on the steps for a moment. So we can chat. Hi. So as I mentioned during our announcement time, next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. What, what do we usually do when we come to church on Ash Wednesday? What do we get on us? You put, your, you put a thing on your head. Yeah. You put ashes on your head. Ashes on your head. And it hurts more. It doesn't hurt. You've had them before. No, no because they're ashes of the fire. But they're not, ash, they're not hot ashes. They're ashes that have been cooled over. And do you know what those ashes are made from? Traditionally, it is a little different this year, but traditionally, the palms, on Palm Sunday, which is the Sunday before Easter, we wave palms in the sanctuary. Do you remember doing that? We actually burn those palms and save the ashes for Ash Wednesday. And it helps us remember the cycle, right? Because what happens a week after Palm Sunday? Easter which is when we celebrate Jesus being resurrected, but before he's resurrected, he had to die. And Ash Wednesday helps us remember, we say in Ash Wednesday service, from dust you came into dust you will return. And we start off our season of Lent with this solemn service of Ash Wednesday because Lent, it's kind of a, a sad time. We're leading up to Jesus' death. And it's, it's a solemn time, which solemn is kind of a big word for serious because you solemnly swear, which means you, but, well, Harry Potter does that, but, but we take the time during Lent to focus ourselves differently, to remember the words of Jesus. Our scripture today is the transfiguration, which we're about to hear, and part of that, God says, listen to Jesus, and that's an important thing for us to remember for Lent. We listen to the words of Jesus, so I invite you to talk with me and dad and your brother and sister at home, and for you boys and girls at home to talk with your families about what you could do over the next 40 days of the season of Lent. Wait, is it 46? It's actually, it's like 46 days, but the Sundays don't count. We'll talk about that next Sunday. But I invite you to spend time talking with your family about how you can listen to Jesus this season of Lent. What are some family practices you could do? What are some different prayers or practices like sitting quietly or maybe helping other people or serving each other differently that you can do that would help you really listen to Jesus? Can you do that? Okay. Can you pray after me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you for your love. Thank you for, your love. Thank you for Lent. Thank you for Lent. That helps us, that helps us remember, remember to listen to you. To listen to you. Amen. Thank you. Our gospel lesson today is Mark chapter 9. Six days after Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves, he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make these three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from that cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around and they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
I'm sure that many of you watched the Super Bowl last Sunday, and perhaps even caught the halftime show. It was an interesting performance, and I will admit to having really only known one song of By the Weekend, which was his final song, Blinding Lights. In the chorus, he says, I'm blinded by the lights. And as I was reading Mark's account of the transfiguration, I just kept hearing that phrase running through my head. Jesus has taken Peter and James and John up the mountain by themselves. I'm sure you've heard this story before. It comes around in our lectionary reading every Sunday before Ash Wednesday. And while they're up on top of the mountain, Jesus is transfigured in front of them. His clothes become such a dazzling white color, no one on earth could have created it. Suddenly, Elijah and Moses appear with Jesus. I imagine the disciples were somewhat blinded by the light that they saw. Jesus try, uh, Peter tries to respond to the event and says uh, one of my favorite lines of scripture. He talks about, it's good to just stay here. Let's build dwellings. Sometimes Peter gets a bad rap for that line. Perhaps it's played off as senseless or insensitive. But I actually think it's his response of fear. Scripture tells us the disciples were terrified by what they saw. Up on that mountain, the disciples saw something they had never seen before. They were blinded from the fear about what was happening in front of them, and perhaps even for what they anticipated was coming for them. The transfiguration story lies in the middle of Mark's gospel, halfway between the baptism of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. It is a pivotal moment in the overall arc of the gospel narrative, as the way of Jesus to the cross is being revealed here. Right before this passage, Jesus predicts his own passion and death for the first time and tells his disciples they must take up their cross to follow him. Now on the mountain, a voice from heaven speaks to them, This is my son. Listen to him. Now they must follow Jesus down the mountain, learning what it means to bear a cross. See, cross-bearing is not timid or weak. Cross-bearing does not glorify suffering. Cross-bearing rather entails naming the crosses bearing down upon our lives and upon those around us, and resisting those savage forces. The teaching of Jesus, the teaching to take up our cross and follow him, is a teaching of agitation. It is a call to us to name and resist the crosses in our landscape that seek to defy God's will for us all. Forces like racism, sexism, classism, escapism, fatalism, empire power abuse, to just name a few. Jesus calls us to take up our cross and face the tension and agitation of naming and resisting them, knowing full well there may be consequences to our actions. In the narrative of transfiguration, Jesus is outwardly changed. It does not alter who Jesus is, but rather gives the disciples a new understanding of who he already was. The disciples are dazzled, blinded by the light of this epiphany, but they are terrified as well. They can no longer deny the power of the message that Jesus brings, which means they must fully embrace listening to Jesus and be ready to name the crosses that bear down on them. In just three short days, we will gather together again to remember Ash Wednesday, which will spur us into the season of Lent. A season when we listen, really listen to Jesus, to the power of his words and teaching, to the message of love that refuses to play the world's power games of domination, exploitation, greed, and deception. A love that was so engaged in naming the powers that hold people back 
from experiencing the fullness of God's love that it led to death. Friends, today we gather at this table. We gather virtually as we continue in this season of pandemic, but we gather at the table regardless. This is the table where we listen to Jesus, where we remember his call to us to listen to God's Son, God's beloved, and do it in remembrance of Jesus. Jesus was transfigured. A blinding light hit the disciples, and they were transformed. They were changed slowly over time. That blinding light burned away their fear and left love in its place. How will you be transformed this Lenten season? How will you listen to God's beloved? How will you let God's pure, blinding light show up in your life and help you see the crosses bearing down on us all. Be blinded by the light. Come to this table to be refreshed, and then go down the mountain and into the world, transformed. Amen. It is our tradition on Communion Sundays that our affirmation of faith is the Nicene Creed. Please stand with me as you feel so moved as we affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. God's love was made known to us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. We come to this table confident that we live in the love that God pours upon us. We are claimed, we are renewed, we are transformed by that love. A love that will not let us go. A love that leads us our whole lives long a love that is intended to be shared with the world. This table before you is, happens to be a Tuckahoe Presbyterian church, but it is not our table. Neither it's a Presbyterian table, it is the Lord's table. If you are joining us today and you are not a member of this church, you are welcome. If you are joining us today and you have doubt in your heart about what this means for you, 
you are welcome. If you are joining us today, hungering and thirsting for life, you are welcome. Let us now prepare our hearts with prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give, give our thanks and, and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, you are the mighty one. By your word the sun rises and sets, the heavens declare your righteousness, and the prophets speak your truth. You gather us to yourself, for we are yours. Therefore, we praise you, joining the song of the Universal Church and the Heavenly Choir. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the mountain with Peter, James, and John, he was transfigured. There, Moses and Elijah appeared, and your voice was heard, echoing from his baptism. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup. Make us one in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. By your Spirit, let us shine through us, so that we may proclaim Jesus Christ in our lives and take the gospel out into the world with love. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. And we unite our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took the bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after supper, our Savior took the cup. He poured it out before the eager eyes of his disciples. Saying, this cup is a covenant in my blood. Poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. So friends, every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we do proclaim the saving death of our risen Savior until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us enjoy this feast together.
you thanks, Lord Jesus Christ, for the gifts of grace we have received from your hand. Now send us forth to reflect your light, proclaiming your saving death and resurrection until you do come again in glory. Amen. and ready to listen to God's beloved. Share strength with the weak. Listen to the voices that have been silenced. See one another, hear one another, care for one another, and love one another. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. And may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and every breath that you take. Amen. Amen.